Hey Nanobytes, I have a new episode of Comic Reviews of Fate. And they're brought to you by my own comic book series, Red Knight. Issue 5 is out, you can buy it on my Etsy shop. Uh, the link will be below. And uh, this issue, Red Knight and Martha uh, come in contact with a uh, new supervillain. Actually, he's an old supervillain, he's been around for a while, and he's kind of on the D-list now of supervillains. And he's resorted to just simply... Uh, running a car theft ring and turning them into evil robots. Well, the rest gets kind of crazy. So, uh, check it out. Issue 5 is out now. And let's go to some comic book reviews. Uh, issue 6 of Captain Marvel by Kelly Sue DeConnick. And uh, Emma Reyes is still doing the uh, art. Uh, she's finishing up this uh, story arc. And we begin with, uh, let's see, I think that's... Uh, Let's see, who is that, uh, which friend is this? This is, uh, it's an old friend of, uh, Carol's trying to, oh, Tra Tracy, yeah, uh, there you go, it's Tracy, uh, here in the hospital room. Um, Carol's still lost in time, so she's not there yet, uh, which, I don't know if that makes sense, but, uh, yes, yeah, she's not there yet, and Jessica has to uh, help her. Uh, Jessica Drew, uh, Spider-Woman, and uh, Carol Danvers have a pretty clever arrangement where if they go missing for a while, you know, on their kooky hijinks, the other one kind of, like, fills in for uh, various activities that they have to do. Uh, that's kind of smart thinking, actually. Uh, meanwhile, back in time, uh, we can't really say what time it is because it's comic book time now, so uh, just before Carol gets her superpowers from that giant Kree machine from the Captain Marvel issue of, what, 18 or something like that? It was a long, long fucking time ago. And, let's see. Uh, let's see, Helen is trying to talk her into getting involved in fucking up the time stream. <laughs> and uh, there's a moment where she just kind of sees uh, the original Captain Marvel get in trouble and she jumps in. Oh. Uh, then, of course, all hell breaks loose when the, uh, the machine explodes. And, of all things, Helen gets uh, Captain Marvel powers, uh, which results in the fight. Which is a pretty clever fake-out uh, of what we were promised. We were told uh, Captain Marvel versus Captain Marvel fight. We just weren't told which Captain Marvels were fighting. Ha ha ha. Not bad. Uh, anyway, the uh, let's see. Uh, after that fight scene, we got... Uh, Carol uh, jumps back into uh, the plane and heads home. Uh, not too bad, I'd say. This is a really great series. This is a pretty well-ended... Uh, I won't give too much away about the exact ending, but uh, uh, I really enjoyed this first story arc. Wow, this was great. You know, what was interesting was I was having fun with it, but I wasn't sure if it was the proper story arc to really begin. And then the last two issues really did sum it up. It's like, oh, okay, great. This is what Dakana is doing with uh, the character. Uh, I love it a lot. Issue 6 is terrific. Go find these issues, 1 through 6. Uh, and if you're waiting for the trade, get, get the trade uh, whenever that comes out. Uh, this is 5 Ram Chips. Uh, highly recommend this whole series. Now, let's go to some X books. Hey, I'm buying... I got three X-Men books here. What the hell is going on? Uh, first off, it's uh, Peter David's uh, X-Factor. And... Let's see, uh, Leonard Kirk is uh, doing the art. Uh, well, this is pretty much the end of uh, the Breaking Point story. And Breaking Points is it's an interesting story. It's not the classic super team gets changed forever through some cataclysm, time stream, horrible event kind of explode thingy. Um, the team over the last five issues have just kind of been going their separate ways. There, uh, There's nothing just huge going on. This is actually a lot of character stuff, which I think is interesting. Uh, and this issue focuses mainly on Havoc, uh, dealing with the fact that uh, his brother Cyclops just went kablooey, basically, during the whole uh, X-Men uh, versus Avengers thing. See, the thing is, he's always kind of lived in Cyclops' shadow, and always felt like he was never going to be the leader that Cyclops was, and now Cyclops is, you know, created this huge, terrible mistake, and he's now kind of been, uh, he's on, is he on the outs? I mean, everybody, he's had a huge downfall, and it's like, well, great, what's that make me? 
If I can't even live up to that guy, and he's now, like, everybody's shitless. Uh, anyway, this pretty much sets up what's going to happen with Havoc. He's going to be joining the um, the uh, new uh, Uncanny Avengers very soon, which I'm very, very excited about. Uh, I've always liked Havoc, and um, I've always liked the way Peter, da Peter David has really kind of uh, gravitated to the character over the years, uh, since the 90s when he started writing uh, X Factor on and off. Uh, he's always had a lot of uh, respect and empathy for the character, and I... I, I'm just very happy to see where he's going. He's also a really powerful character, too. I don't know why he has any kind of um, <laughs> issues compared to his brother. He, he, he can throw huge blasts of energy just as bad as his brother can. I don't know why he's always had that issue. But, hey, whatever. People are people. So, I uh, really enjoyed this. I'm going to keep reading it, uh, X Factor. And uh, this issue's a pretty solid four Ram Chips, I think. Now... Uh, the last issue of X-Men Legacy. Uh, this is 275. This is... Now, I'm not a regular reader of this book, so let's see. Uh, Christopher Gage and David uh, Baldion. Now, this mainly uh, also deals with uh, Rogue kind of just uh, figuring out what she wants to do. Actually, there, this doesn't have too much dissimilar to uh, the last issue of X-Factor. Uh, of course, Rogue has been the leader of this version of, uh, of the X-Men. There's a big breakout at the, what, what do you call that, uh, the vault. Uh, so she and uh, Mimic go down uh, to uh, help uh, help with the big uh, problem, which is great because there's this terrific sequence where she goes to uh, the minimal security wing where, you know, the guys are pretty much not misbehaving. So she, she uh, convinces some of them to uh, let her loan... Uh, let her loan uh, some of their powers, uh, which is great. It's a terrific sequence where she like comes in this giant monstrosity and just kicks the shit out of a whole bunch of them. Uh, this was a really fun issue, actually. In a, in a weird way, it was almost the opposite uh, the, uh, the, the opposite take of uh, the uh, X Factor book, where you know it does the same things, kind of um, character-wise, but uh, you know we get a big action uh, sequence uh, for this uh, for this last issue. Uh, lots of fun. Uh, I gotta tell you, I don't know if I've really talked about this publicly, but, um, because uh, I don't really talk about X-Men too much, but my favorite X-Men is Rogue, actually. I always thought she's a really cool character, she has a great power, uh, and uh, she has a really interesting history. I've always really enjoyed the character. Uh, so, guess what I'm reading next month, or this week, or whenever the hell, uh, Uncanny X, uh, Uncanny Avengers. I'm gonna have to get used to saying that. That's those words don't work together. It's like saying Amazing Hulk. Um, although I just said that. This is, this was really good. I'm gonna also give this a strong four Ram chips. Now, over uh, to uh, her ex boyfriend uh, Gambit's book. Uh, this is issue four of Gambit, and this is by uh, James Amis and uh, Clay Mann with Leonard Kirk. Oh, hey, he's working on two books this month. Anyway, uh, it's pretty much the end sequence of him and his mystery woman uh, unlocking the keys to the kingdom or whatever the hell they were supposed to be doing and doing some serious fighting with demon dragon things with multiple heads. Uh, a really cool sequence, actually. Uh, it's, it's done pretty well. The dragons are scary. And it's a uh, you know, pretty interesting fight. It takes up most of the book, actually. Um, and then, of course, we're going to build up to the last page where... The guy he ripped off in the first issue is back, and he's mad. So, it's like, so what, man? I just fought giant three-headed dragons. Fuck you. You think you and your goons are going to do anything? Oh, well, maybe they will. Uh, this is a good, uh, I think this is the last, I think this is the first kind of story arc, basically. I don't, I think we're going into a new story arc. Uh, so, this is a four-ram chipper right here. Uh, not bad series so far. I'm really kind of digging it. Now, over to Image, uh, It Girl, boo, 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 issue three, and this is by, uh, let's see, Jamie Rich and Mike Norton, and let's see, It Girl is still trying to figure out the mystery of the skunk, yeah, there's a guy named the skunk, and uh, he is, he's a guy trying to not be a villain anymore, but everybody keeps pu pulling him back in, you know, the whole Godfather 3 thing, you know, just when I think I'm out, it, Pulling the back end, and uh, and I'm sure you know Coppola was thinking uh, of characters like the skunk when he uh, when he wrote that script. But um, 
let's see, it, it seems like uh, he's not exactly going with uh, the whole kind of plan here. But then again, we see the mystery villain show up at the end, and uh, let's see, uh, maybe, I won't, maybe I won't give that away, but uh, let's see, we get to find out who uh, this mystery villain was that's kind of been keeping an eye on It Girl last couple of issues. Oh, uh, not too bad. Uh, the art's very cute too, by the way. Uh, four Ram Chips. Now we're at the end. Uh, actually, I probably shouldn't have saved this for the end because I have the least amount to say about this issue. Marceline and the Squeen Queens, uh, issue four of six. And uh, let's see, let's, boop, 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 where, let's see. Pelton Ward and Meredith Grain is uh, doing the art. And, oh, excuse me, he's the <laughs> creator, excuse me. Uh, this is, series is written and uh, illustrated by Meredith Grain. Excuse me. And not too much really to say exactly. Uh, the, the band goes to this kind of undersea world, and they're trying to figure out, like, how to play, how are they going to be playing, like, underwater, and uh, how that comes about is very interesting and, and very sudden, let's just say. It's a really cute issue. I'll um, dig this series a lot. I love everything uh, Adventure Time, really. This is five Ram Chips. Uh, if you dig Marceline, this is a really terrific series. Actually, it's a good series. Um about her relationship with um, uh, Princess Bubblegum, actually. Uh, I, I, I dig this a lot. Five round chips. I think that's it, Lindsay, so push the button.